I'm so happy to be joined now by Francisco Glaria. And Francisco's from Pamplona in Basque country, and he's one of our guides that does tours of the Basque region. Francisco, thanks for joining us. Kai Rick. Thanks for hosting me today. Yeah. Hey, I want to uh, share with our, our viewers right now a little bit about the tour that you lead, uh, and which is your homeland, basically. And this is uh, the Basque Country Tour in nine days. Uh, you live in Pamplona, but our tour goes both in the French and in the Spanish part of Basque Country. Of course, Basque Country is that is that nation without a state. It's uh, people who speak Basque. They have a long heritage of Basqueness. And when they drew the line between France and Spain, they ignored that. And of course, the Basque people wanted to keep their culture alive, and it's alive and well as we learn on our tour. Francisco, I'm just going to go quickly through these slides and invite you to give us a little peek at what you'll share with people when they take a Rick Steves tour of Basque Country. Okay. Well, this is the guidebook that you wrote about the Basque Country. All our tour members will, will get and have all the information about Basque Country, places, how to reach places, perfect place. One of the most important cities, or probably the most well-known, is the city of San Sebastian. Uh, breathtaking by the coast. Mm, we say that God decided to make a perfect city, and that was San Sebastian. <laughs> really coastal, but the most important thing, or the most famous thing about the city are the tapas, the food in the city. Tapas, uh, it's a small, odd cuisine food in small portions. Very great delicacies, not too expensive. So I always tell my tour members that to go wild, give it a try to something that you've never seen before. It's going to be healthy. It's going to be good. Trust me, if you don't have any allergies, give it a try. Come out of your comfort zone. I love that. If God made a perfect city, it was San Sebastian, and God must love good food because it is gourmet <laughs> heaven, I'll tell you. Okay, this is a hard one. Uh, what it says, it reads here on top of this ATM, says this is not Spain. And this has to do with the separatism movement. Back in Franco times, we were not allowed to be Basque, and our culture was totally erased. Out of hate only comes hate. Terrorist band came out of that repression called ETA. That separatist movement started. And the thing is that today, the separatist band, the terrorist band, is long gone. There's absolutely no fear about it. But they have become a political branch, and they still, once in a while, believe or understand that we need to get out of Spain. Personally, I don't believe in it anymore because Europe is giving voice to all of these small regions, all of these small cultures. So we don't need to fight again to be what we are. So. It's you know, a big that's, debate. That's a very good thing about the EU, I believe, is that the capital is in Brussels and Brussels recognizes ethnic regions as well as political regions and the small nations without states like people in Basque Country and Catalonia and so on. They get a voice and uh, now there's less reason to be upset, but the Basque people still are sticking to their their passion for having their culture alive and well. And you've had some other challenges in your recent past. Uh, 1937. This is the city of Guernica. Guernica, for us, the Basque people, is where our heart, where our ancestors used to get together. So it's our, I don't know how to describe it, our home. And it was 1937 when the three fascist dictators in Europe got together, Adolf Hitler, Mussolini, and Franco, decided to destroy the whole city. The city was bombarded, total destruction. When the master of Spanish painters, Pablo Picasso, heard about it, he painted this mural. The original painting, it is in Madrid at the Queen Sofia Museum. This is a tile replica that we get to see and mm. try to understand when we are in Guernica. Guernica, you know, P Picasso's masterpiece humanizes what we call collateral damage because there was collateral damage in history's first aerial bombardment and those fascist dictators chose to destroy the historic capital that goes back centuries and centuries of the Basque people. But of course, the Basque people are thriving now. One of the one of the one of the economic and industrial powerhouses of Spain happens to be a Basque city, doesn't it? You're right, Rick. This is Bilbao. Bilbao has always been one of the big economical motors of Spain. We've had huge building factories, iron factories in the city of Bilbao. Now, most of them are gone. And what we have changed it, it's for culture and art. And especially this incredible Franco Gehry building, which is the Guggenheim Museum of Modern Art. Oh, it's so beautiful. 
Look at that. And it's if you, if you want a, a just dose of contemporary culture, high culture in Europe, you'll find it right there in Bilbao. I love it. It's now, your hometown place. is Pamplona, and uh, Hemingway loved Pamplona. It's famous for the running of the bulls. Yes, my hometown, Pamplona. Uh, here I am wearing my Rhino of the Bulls outfit. We all wear white and red during the week of the Rhino of the Bulls, which is from July 6th to July 14th. Not obviously all the Rick Steve stores come during that time of the year because Pamplona has so much more to offer. Yes, yeah. we do talk about Rhino of the Bulls when we're here, but Pamplona, we have a cathedral. We have so many other things that we learn on the tour. I mean, we talk about uh, religion, we talk about history, uh, and especially, we talk about the Camino de Santiago. Well, that's right. When I was there with you, we saw the, the 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 pilgrims coming in on one side of the town and in the morning leaving on the other side of the town as they hiked their way all the way to Santiago de Compostela. But you know, Fran, when I was gathering these slides together that I'm just blindsiding you with now, I found <laughs> this and I don't even know what's going on here, but it's on a Rick Steves Basque Country tour. What's happening with your tour group? Okay, so... On the tour, we visit a sheep farm where we, they produce Basque uh, sheep cheese. And we talk with a, with a shepherd, with Pachi. And we, when we go into the stables, we always wear shoe, <laughs> shoe caps or shoe covers. And I told Pachi, hey, why don't we put it on the head? Let's see if everybody follows. Let's see if they have a sense <laughs> of humor. And everybody did. It was the funniest moment ever. Loved it. And I bet the I bet the shepherd is still talking about that crazy American group that put their shoe guards on their head so the sheep would not have any hair in the cheese, I suppose. <laughs> Francisco Gloria, thanks for joining us. And again, when you take a Rick Steves Basque Country tour in nine days, you will start in the French part of Basque Country for two nights in Bayonne. You go to Francisco's hometown of Pamplona. You'll enjoy the gourmet tapas and all of the beautiful beaches in San Sebastian. You'll stop in the historic capital of Basque Country, Guernica, and you'll finish with the contemporary modern city in Bilbao. It's a great opportunity to appreciate a slice of Europe that is often underrated. Francisco, how do you say thank you and good day in Basque? Es que ricasco et agur, Rick Steve. Thank you very much, Rick Steve. And let's keep on traveling. Let's see if I, hopefully we'll see you in the Basque country soon. I'm on my way, Francisco. Thanks so much for joining us. Happy travels. Happy travels.